Hello friends and welcome back to another mobile filmmaking tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to film a travel video with your iPhone. So I'm currently here in Landwasser Viaduct uh, in Switzerland. There's a train coming. I don't know if you can see that train, but uh, I'm gonna get a shot of that later. Before we start, first of all, why would you want to film a travel video with your iPhone? To be honest, it is so much more convenient since they fit in your pocket, produce high quality video and is best suited for run and gun shooting. If you know what you're doing, you can get some really great results with your iPhone. Additionally, it's an all-in-one system where you can film, edit and export the video using just your smartphone. It's truly amazing what a smartphone can do nowadays. Keep in mind that there will be a timestamp in the video description below if you want to skip or head back to a particular part of the video. Also, if you're new to iPhone filmmaking, make sure to download my free iPhone filmmaking guide that will help you find the right tools to get started with iPhone filmmaking. So with that out of the way, let's get started. So first of all, before you even start shooting, you want to treat your iPhone like a video camera. Really take the extra step. For example, use the guidelines to frame your subject. The rule of thirds is a great way to set your composition to create a balanced image. If you're unfamiliar with the rule of thirds, make sure to check out the how to film and edit on iPhone video. You also want to take the extra step to think about the shots you need. Don't just randomly film everything from eye level. Really get creative and use different angles to make the shot look more interesting. Maybe even create a shot list if you're already familiar with the location you're heading. I realized that many beginners make the mistake of capturing just wide shots. Get closer to your subject, this way you can create more emotion in your video. So treat your iPhone like a professional camera, shoot creatively and have an open mind to experiment with your shots. So next we're gonna talk about gear preparation and setup. It sometimes can be challenging to know what gear to bring with you, especially if you never have been to that place before. Luckily with smartphone gear, you don't have that much to carry with you, but you still want to be thoughtful about what gear you want to take with you. I also like to challenge myself to just bring a couple of accessories with me. When traveling, I like to bring the telelens and macro lens with me. I got these from Sandmark, which is a brand from California that produces high quality lenses for iPhones. The telephoto lens allows me to optically zoom in four times when mounting it on the built-in telephoto lens. This can be very useful if you can't or don't want to get close to the subject. It also increases the shallow depth of field compared to the wide angle lens. I like using this lens to film subjects faces and doing like a portrait video where the subject stands still creating a slide camera movement. The macro lens allows you to shoot in a unique perspective. You can create detailed shots which people normally wouldn't notice. I like using this lens to capture the subject's eye or to get extreme close-ups of plants. Another tool I brought with me that you're certainly familiar with is the smartphone gimbal. This is the DJI OM4 that allows me to get steadier shots and create unique camera movements. I especially like the magnetic clamp uh, since it's convenient to set up the camera quickly and is compatible with a lens mount on your iPhone since you can add Add counterweights to the gimbal as well. I can also charge my iPhone if I don't have enough battery since shooting video can drain it quickly. I like using the gimbal to get different moving shots but also create time lapses since it has a tripod. There are certainly times where I wish I had brought that gear with me to create the shot I needed. A lot of times in filmmaking it's about solving a problem. Try to figure out how to create the shots with what you have. So keep in mind to know what you need to shoot, avoid overpacking and challenge yourself to just bring a few items with you to use creatively in your videos. Let's move on to camera settings. In many of my videos, I use Filmic Pro. If you want to be quicker in capturing moments, using the native camera app on the iPhone is a great option. It doesn't give you full control over your camera, so you're limited in certain situations, but for travel videos, I find it works pretty well. I'm using the iPhone 11 Pro Max and the camera settings I usually go with is 4K 60 frames per second. 4K has more detail and allows me to crop in. 60 frames per second gives me the option to slow down the 
footage in post to create a more dramatic scene. I recommend not to overuse slow motion as seen in many travel videos. It's good to include normal speed to make the video more engaging. Usually on professional shoots, I would use a microphone to capture the best audio quality possible. For run and gun shooting where I'm doing a short travel video, the built-in audio on the iPhone actually produces decent quality if it's not too windy outside, of course. Now, before you start recording, important is that you lock your focus and exposure beforehand so that no changes occur. So let's talk about story. Story plays an important role in your video. You want to have a clear structure of your story. You basically want to have a beginning, middle and end. Think about how to start and end your video. It doesn't have to be complicated. It could be as simple as filming your day. During the story, you want change to happen. Otherwise, it's no story. It could be a small change. For example, the character had a bad day. Something happened that all of a sudden made his day better. People want to understand why things happen the way they happen, even though life can appear uh, quite random sometimes. So next is scene coverage. When shooting a scene in a travel video, it's important to shoot from different angles so that the footage cuts together smoothly. You want to have a wide shot, medium shot, and close up. A wide shot establishes the scene. A medium shot focuses the attention to the subject, making it more dominant. Close-ups are great for filming the subject's face that show a certain reaction or expression or things that people normally wouldn't see in a medium shot. By keeping these three angles in mind, you will be able to create a more dynamic scene in your video and tell a better story. You can, of course, shoot more but be strategic about it. So these were my tips on shooting a travel video. I know for starters, this can be overwhelming, but as long as you practice and use those tips uh, that I've mentioned, you will get better. So once again, a big thanks to George for helping me out. Make sure to follow him on Instagram at George Paolo Photo and me at Bennett Grazer. Subscribe if you are new to my channel so that I can keep creating awesome tutorials for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to see more similar tutorials like this one, make sure to watch these two videos as well. Take care, my friends, and I will see you in the next video.